Good morning. Today we're continuing our study of the Psalms. We're using that part of the scriptures as a basis to help us learn how to deal with the emotions we're going through in this lengthy pandemic. And today we come to a very, I was going to say popular, but I think a better word is common emotion, the emotion of fear. I mean, let's face it, there's a lot to be afraid of with this COVID-19 virus and all it can do to us. With that in mind, take your Bibles and turn to the 55th Psalm. Now, like most Psalms, this one was written by King David. Now, think about King David. I mean, when you try to get a mental image of this particular king of Israel, what do you see? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I see Brad Pitt in his role as Achilles in the movie Troy. And I get that mental image because David was a brave, valiant warrior. The Bible tells us that. I mean, he he killed a lion and a bear with his bare hands. He killed the giant Goliath all by himself with just a sling. Nothing seemed to scare David. David bravely led his band of mighty men, much like a, a Jewish Robin Hood, coming to the aid of the common Hebrew farmers, protecting them from the marauding Philistines, while all the time cleverly keeping out of the clutches of wicked King Saul. And yet in this 55th Psalm, well, David sounds the opposite of brave. In fact, I would say he sounds like he's in panic attack mode. Look at the Psalm. He uses phrases like, my thoughts trouble me. I am distraught. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. Well, that should be comforting to us because it shows that, well, the fear we're going through right now is something that all people deal with, even mighty warriors like David. And that means we shouldn't be ashamed or embarrassed by how we're feeling right now in this pandemic. These days, we can, we can all relate to King David and, and Psalm 55, the way he felt. Our thoughts trouble us, amen? We are distraught at times as we watch the news. Agree? We fear death. We, we're overwhelmed by it all. Can I get an amen? Thank you. And fear can be overwhelming, can it? Think of all the ways that it affects us. It, it drains us dry of contentment. It robs us of joy. Fear makes us feel more self-preoccupied and therefore less attentive and loving to other people who are afraid and dealing with tough times. Fear makes temptations look especially attractive because we'll do anything to escape the uncomfortable feeling of fear. Fear erodes our ability to feel grateful for what we do have. It increases our irritability. And here's the really bad news. Fear can bring our growth as Christians to a grinding halt. This is what Jesus was referring to in the parable of the soils when he said, the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world, the fears of the world enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. When you think of all the damage then that fear can cause, it's no wonder that fear not is the most common command in, God, in the Bible, in God's word. God doesn't want us to experience fear and all the damage it can do. Well, how do we obey this most popular command? How do we fear not? The answer to this question is learning to think right. This is the key because you see, fear begins in our thoughts and our minds, minds that are filled with anxiety. Those kinds of minds are basically the results of inputting wrong things, thinking wrong things. In his fourth chapter of his letter to the church at Philippi, Paul refers to this principle. He says, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Paul knew that our thought life is very important. That as it says in Proverbs 4, 3, 23, we must be careful what we think because our thoughts run our lives. You know, some of you know my undergraduate degree, which happened a long time ago, was in music. I, I got a degree in music education. And you may not know this, but even if you're a voice major, you still have to pass a piano proficiency test to get a music degree. So I took a lot of piano in college. I took 
class piano, and you know, there's a lot of pianos in the room, and the teacher teaches everybody at the same time. I also took several semesters of private piano lessons, and even though I took all those classes on piano, I'm kind of ashamed to confess I barely passed my, my piano proficiency exam. Sorry about the wind. But I did learn enough to find my way around a keyboard, and in the process, I also picked up an important principle of life as well. You see, my piano studies helped me to begin to understand that our minds are amazing recording instruments. They're kind of like super, a supersized TiVo that is always operational. I mean, your brains record literally everything that you do, both good and bad. All my time trying to learn to play the piano taught me this because when I would make a mistake on a piece of music, which I did quite often, my mind would record it. It would learn to play that mistake, such that if I were not very careful, I'd find myself stumbling at the same exact place, making the same exact mistake the next time I tried to pay that, play that particular piece of music. And the more I would make that same mistake, the better my mind would learn it, such that a sort of mental playing rut would be formed, a rut I could easily fall into whenever I played that piece. And the only way to correct that situation would be to do what piano teachers always want you to do. Anybody want to guess what that is? It starts with a P, right? I think I heard someone say practice, 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 practice. They say that because practice is a way of making a, a bigger mental rut by doing the part of the piece where you mess up, doing it correctly, doing it correctly over and over and over and over again, such that a correct playing rut is formed that's bigger than the incorrect playing rut. That makes it much more likely that you'll play the piece right. The old phrase, practice makes perfect, is apparently true. I think I can hear Judy Owens and Erica Lau amening me uh, very loudly right now out there. Well, the things we think about make mental ruts. And the more we think wrong thoughts, the more likely we're to fall into the rut of thinking that way over and over again. So to paraphrase Paul, we need to develop, to develop ruts, that are made, ruts that are made of right thinking. We need to practice right thoughts. We, we have to discipline ourselves to think rightly. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at the kinds of things that Paul says we ought to think about as Christians in order to learn how to deal with the fear we're going through in this pandemic. First of all, Paul says, we should think about things that are true, things that are true. And that's especially helpful when it comes to fear because most of the things we fear are not true. I'm reminded of a, a poem. He worried about the weather. He worried about his health. He worried about his business. He worried about his wealth. She worried about the children. She worried about her clothes. She worried about the neighbors. She worried about her woes. They worried about their taxes. They worried about their pets. They worried about their future. They worried about their debts. They worried, still they worried. They worried, but alas, they worried about a lot of things that did not come to pass. We shouldn't worry about things that aren't true, things that aren't going to happen. Listen, as Jesus said in John 8, 44, Satan is a liar, and one of his most effective weapons is to corrupt our minds with lies making us worry about things that are not factual, things that aren't right to worry about. So when fear or anxiety hits, try this. Stop and ask yourself, is this thing I'm worrying about true? Usually the answer will be no. Most of our fears are based on untrue things, wrong things. Let's apply it to COVID-19. It is a terrible, a, a terrible virus. I, I admit that. Doctors tell us it's five times more deadly than the flu. But the truth is, statistically, it is very unlikely that you or I will get this virus. And even if we do, statistically, it's very unlikely that we would die. And even if we were to get the virus and then die, well, remember the message of Easter just a couple weeks back? The, for the Christian, statistics are 100% on this, that death is gain. So what are you afraid of? Is it something that is true? No. You know, my newest son-in-law was commenting on an old saying that he saw it. I'm sure you've heard it. It's ultra pessimistic. 
life sucks, and then you die. He said, that's wrong. Life is good, and then you get to go to heaven. I love my son-in-law. He's right. For the Christian, the fact is, there is nothing we need fear. That's the truth. Now, Paul also says that right thinking involves dwelling on things that are good, good, things that are honest and just and perfect things, things that are worthy of respect, things that are true or lovely or radiant or of good report, things that possess virtue and praise. In other words, to fight our fears, we must fill our minds with good thoughts, the best kinds of thoughts, the, the kinds of thoughts that are fit for God's ears. This is important to do because many of our fears come from, well, from thinking bad things. You know, I noticed on our Netflix screen that, which we've been watching a lot of Netflix, as I'm sure you have too, I noticed that the most popular movies, the ones that are really trending these days during this pandemic are movies about pandemics, movies like Contagion and, and Outbreak, movies that are not based on completely good science terrifying films where people bleed from their eyes and, and, and die. Films where young moms are taken from their young families to tent hospitals, and then later in the movie you see that young mom's dead body lying there. Well, if that's the kind of stuff you input into your mind, it's no wonder that you deal with fear in this pandemic. I mean, when we fill our brains with fearful stuff, that's what's going to come out. We find ourselves falling more easily into the fear rut when we do that. So to defeat fear, we need to input good things. As Paul puts it in Romans 12, 2, and this is a paraphrase, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. By the way, I find it interesting to see that Psalm 19, another Psalm, verses 7 through 9, parallels these same right thinking kinds of things that Paul lists in Philippians 4. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving lights to the, light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. This tells us that the best good thing to put in our heads these days is God's Word. In fact, it's the best good thing all days, not just during pandemic days. Because when we have the Word of God in our minds, we have this uh, built-in radar for detecting and filtering out wrong thoughts. <clears throat> this is why it's so important to have a daily quiet time. I mean, one result of daily meditation on the Word of God is a renewed mind, a healed mind, a, a mind where all the bad ruts are filled in, a mind that thinks right. Thinking on the good and the noble and the pure and the lovely and the excellent and the praiseworthy truth of God's Word will change our perspectives on, on fearful times. It'll help us understand that God is bigger than anything that causes us fear and that He's completely sovereign and that He loves us and that He is always with us. Right thinking that comes from scripture meditation is a powerful fear defeater because it teaches us that we can rest in the character of God. This is one time to remember the truth of Tozer's famous quote, what we think about God is the most important thing about us. When we know God, when we fear him or reverence him, we don't fear anything else. Would you pray with me? Father God, we do feel like David in this 55th Psalm. We are distraught and overwhelmed at times when we watch the news. So Father, in the power of your Holy Spirit, help us. Put your all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing arms around us. Comfort us, Father, and whisper the truth of your word into our hearts. Remind us who you are and whose we are. Remind us we are your children, so we need feel, feel no fear. And Father, I pray that you, you use the amazing peace that you give us to draw others who are afraid to faith in your only Son. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Looking forward to chatting with you tonight in our weekly prayer time. Hang in there, Redland. This thing's going to be over one day, and I think one day soon. Love you guys and miss you.